Look at it. How small is this thing? And somehow Viltrox managed to put in a USB-C port, a built-in lens cap, and an autofocus motor. How? Alien technology. That's my guess. Uh, but no, seriously, it is pretty cool and for just 99 bucks. And I'm gonna give this one away to one of you. It's the Sony version, so if you want it, make sure to watch till the end and in the meantime, maybe already subscribe and like this video. Okay, so it's super small, super light. It's actually so small that the rear glass element is kind of exposed a little bit too much for my comfort. Other lenses, I put them on the table sometimes without a cap on, you know? This one, I wouldn't recommend it. There is a chance that you'll scratch it. It's also a metal mount and the rest of the lens is made of plastic. And this ring here, it looks like you can use it for manual focus, but you can't. It's autofocus only. It also has a USB-C port for updates. And then there's also this cool feature. You don't need a lens cap because it's built in. And then something super important, there's no filter thread. So you can't use one of your screw on filters with this lens. But then again, a lens like this, a pancake lens is usually bought by photographers who want the least amount of hassle possible. A camera, a lens, and that's it, go. It's definitely more than sharp enough, a little bit softer in the corners, but nothing to worry about in my opinion. And if you're planning to use this lens on an APS-C camera, well, the corners will be sharper, of course. There's also some vignetting, but you can easily correct this or just leave it. I know a lot of photographers who add a vignette to their photos. I usually leave it, but if you want a super clean image, then just correct it. Nothing wrong with that. But you know, when it comes to those things, sharpness, vignetting, distortion, I always recommend people to look at real life photos taken with the lens and not just a photo of a chart. And if the vignetting or the soft corners don't bother you in actual photos, not photos of charts, well, then you like the lens, right? And don't get me wrong, charts and color cards and everything super useful, but don't focus only on graphs and charts because it will distort your your view on the performance of a lens. And it will just give you more and more unrealistic expectations. You know what I mean? Plus, it's also super subjective because, for example, this lens also flares a lot, but I like that. But if you don't like that, well, I mean, we're both right. You know, we all have different standards for how perfect a lens should be. Okay, the autofocus is also decently fast in bright conditions. Sports photographers probably won't be happy with it because it's not super fast, but for street photography, travel photography, it's absolutely fine. Now, when it gets a bit darker, I like to go out early in the morning or at sunset, for example. When it gets a bit darker, the lens starts hunting sometimes. And well, that's kind of a problem. It's actually the only real problem I see with this lens. And that's because you can't just switch to manual focus because it's autofocus only. So when it starts hunting, normally with a manual focus lens or with a combined autofocus and manual focus, I just switch to manual focus and then problem solved. But with this one, you can't. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. And then another super important thing to keep in mind is that this is an f4.5. And that's it. You can't close down the aperture. It's a fixed 4.5 aperture. So it's not really a lens for video shooters, for example. And 4.5 also means that your backgrounds won't be super blurry unless you get really close to your subject. But you know, maybe it's also time that we stop shooting everything wide open at f1.2, right? So yeah, I mean, it's subjective, but I don't mind the 4.5 unless I'm shooting low light specifically. So all in all, for just 99 bucks, I think this is a fun little lens. I think that's the main conclusion. It's a fun lens. And I think I would have had even more fun if I had a smaller camera because my a7S III, I find it a little too big for this lens. And I feel like I'm missing the point of using a super small pancake lens. Yeah, it's fun to shoot with a super small, lightweight setup, but my a7S III is a little bit too big for that. I like it when you can literally put your camera and lens in your pocket, you know? So I think this lens is perfect for raw street and travel photography. Point, shoot, done. There you go, a fun little lens. Now, if you want this lens, remember it's the Sony version, well, all you have to do is drop a comment and that's it. And of course, like this video and subscribe to my channel, but that's all you need to do. And I'm gonna give you until Wednesday. That's the deadline. That's when I'll pick a winner. 
So, okay, yeah, that's it. Go and see you in the next one.